The Democrats have spent $3.2 million trying to help Bolduc. They've been running anti-Chris Morse ads to help Bolduc in the primary. Because that lunatic that John just told you about, they think, oh, he'll be easier to beat because our candidate, Maggie Hassan, sucks because all she ever does is serve corporate donors. So she's not popular in New Hampshire, where you have a perfectly easy way to be popular and as a Democrat. It's, it's not like the bluest state in the world, okay, but it's if you're a good senator that actually fights for your constituents, relatively easy to win as an incumbent in New Hampshire. But no, she's been, you know, serving corporate donors the entire six years she's been there. She runs as Republican light like an idiot. So they have to spend $3.2 million on a lunatic on the Republican side. And of course, they don't have to spend that money. They're choosing to spend that money. And God help us if Boldick becomes a United States senator. And guys, that's super possible. Yep. It's He's favored in the primary. And in the general election, it's at best 50-50 tiny little bit of a red wave, and he's going to go in. Nobody's paying attention to their specific quotes. They just go and vote Republican or Democrat based on what they saw on the news at, you know, 20 minutes ago. So their Democrats are playing with fire, and they might help Trump burn down our democracy. Yeah. It's impossible not to despise the Democratic establishment. They're just the most corrupt, most awful people. But there's one more super important lesson here. But go ahead, John. You, were, I think you were going to say. Yeah, that. I was just going to say, like, I, they're they're really rolling the dice here. But the dice are like our democracy, our rights, your ability to ever vote again and have it mean something. Like they're the future of the Supreme Court. These dice are somewhat loaded, and it might end up working. You know, maybe maybe the elections will be close enough that that this will be the thing that saves control of the Senate or something. And and I guess, look, if she ends up beating him, then, you know, it is possible that a more moderate Republican might have squeaked by. But, man, if they fail, and not not if they fail in all of these cases, failing in one of them, some of the Republicans, uh, the Republican governors, I should say, that they're supporting, if they take control of some of these states, like in Pennsylvania, for instance, okay, like if she beats uh, Bolduc, that's good. But if, you know, the election system of Pennsylvania is rigged for the 2024 election, then that was a fun strategy that the Democrats engaged in. And the issue is that if they fail in one or more of these, there's no going to be there's not going to be a postmortem on The New York Times about how the gambit failed and you should never trust these people to run the party again. Like if it wins, they'll get some credit, maybe. But if it fails and there's a good chance at this point that it will, I, I feel like there's no risk to their political future, just to our actual future. A hundred percent. I mean, look, two, two things about that. And it gives you a sense of how corrupt uh, mainstream media is. There's never any accountability for the establishment ne in my entire lifetime. I've never seen them say that was a ridiculous strategy by the uh, Democratic leadership and it cost them the election. No matter who it is. I mean, the perfect example just happened last year. Terry McAuliffe, the most establishment Democrat of my lifetime, loses in Virginia the governor's race. And everyone in corporate media says it was the progressives who did it. Well, if you can blame progressives for a Terry McAuliffe loss, you can blame progressives for anything because you're a goddamn liar. And so New York Times, NPR, CNN, MSNBC, all those people lie to you on a super regular basis about how wonderful Democratic leadership is and, and how everything is the fault of progressives. I mean, the framing is the lie. It's really, it's disgusting what yeah. they do. And speaking of disgusting, I mean, look at what the Democrats are doing. They do fundraising emails that they send to you guys and they say, save our democracy. The Republicans are trying to take away our democracy. You send them your hard-earned money, and they send it to the guy trying to end democracy. Yep. No, it's just unbearable. They're the worst of the worst. To be fair, look, we're always fair. To be fair to mainstream media, hey, Chuck Todd asked about it the other day, and a couple other anchors have asked about this. Because before elections, they're willing to criticize Democrats so that they're even. Yep. But after elections, they never hold Democratic leadership accountable because those are the beloved powerful that they serve. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. After the elections, they 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 can turn to criticizing progressives, making making it seem as if they're responsible. By the way, th those millions of dollars that they spend on this guy, millions on another, like 
there was a poll that came out. Lauren Boebert's opponents within seven points, according to this poll. Like, I feel like $3 million would help. You know, maybe maybe instead of elevating the crazies, we could take down some of the crazies. How about that? I feel like, or, you know, maybe we could make make some more districts that, that seem, you know, maybe like long shots. We could maybe put them in play and not even just congressional. Like maybe we could take back some of these state houses, state legislatures. There's use for this money. But they're just throwing it at the, at the right wing. They say, oh, well, one of the theories is it's OK if Bolduc wins, maybe the Republicans will give up and won't uh, put money into that race. McConnell's already said, no, I'm putting 30 million in. It's already in Jesus. for whoever wins. OK, because this is their best chance to pick up a seat. John, were you going to say the numbers? I do uh, have because- numbers. Yeah, really. Yeah, fast. It's a reminder that when Mitch McConnell like distances himself from Trump. This is how how much that distance is worth. He's still going to put $30 million into supporting a guy that says the election was stolen.